Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Twin Cities. No, not the Twin Cities you may have been thinking of further up north, but the Twin Cities of Texarkana, Arkansas and Texarkana, Texas. Even though it's only in two states, it gets its name from the Tex in Texas, the Ark in Arkansas, and the Anna in Louisiana. You are going to be shocked by how everyone just abandoned this place. Right now, we are riding down State Line Avenue, which is a dividing line of the two states. And on the right side of the road, you can see the Texas flag on the poles. And on the left side, you can see Arkansas. As of 2020, the Texas side had 36,000 people and the Arkansas side had 29,000. The metropolitan area as a whole had a population of almost 150,000 in 2020. One thing particularly of note is that both cities saw a decline between 2010 and 2020, according to the U.S. Census. So in this video, as we head towards downtown, I'm going to share with you guys what I saw here and give you some of my thoughts on the infrastructure and the overall condition of the town. And this building you see here in the middle is actually a post office and a courthouse. And we have some beautifully manicured sidewalks and a clean, modern structure surrounding it. It's a pretty cool spot. Popular with tourists says you can stand here and have one foot in each state at the same time. If you pass through the town, then it's definitely worth checking out. Adjacent to this building is also a World War II memorial with a park and monument dedicated to those who fought in that war. So far, so good, right? Well, let's get a little deeper into the heart of downtown and see what's going on. First, we're going to stop here at this Amtrak station. From the outside, I initially thought this building might be abandoned, but it's actually in use and the train is in service. It was just eerily quiet out here. Almost felt post-apocalyptic. I only saw one person the whole time I walked around this area and he appeared to work at the station. And mind you, this was the middle of the day on a weekday. And there's the freight train and the tracks. And here we have Texarkana with Los Angeles to the west, 1,591 miles, and Chicago to the northeast, 775 miles.
As we can see here, this is called the original city historic district, as it was originally centered around this train depot. And check that out, Tex Arcana, Real Town. Now this next thing here is pretty cool. Apparently this was an actual real train car that was converted into a coffee shop. Concho. Definitely something I would have checked out, but according to Google, it's temporarily closed. Not sure if that's a permanent closure or what's really going on, but oh well. It's just, it's pretty awesome. All right, now let's go take a look at the heart of the downtown area. All right, we're here on the main street and this is called Broad Street. And the first thing I noticed is all these speed bumps. Kind of reminds me of when I was in downtown Memphis a while back. So clearly we must have had an issue with people driving like maniacs through here. The amazing thing is that all the core infrastructure is intact, like all the sidewalks look good. The pavement is fresh, clean, new-ish looking markings on it. And it looks like there's a few businesses open, but you can tell it seems this place has seen better days. Now we're crossing over into the Texas side and the speed bumps stop. And so does whatever little life that we did have down here. Wow, man, it looks like everybody just completely picked up and left the whole Texas side aside from that government building.
This is downright depressing. Yeah, guys, this whole side looks completely abandoned. Wow. Let's go take a closer look. Very, very quiet. Well, there do appear to be a couple businesses open here and there. Town theme is definitely strong out here. Nice little train based sort of bar. And it looks intact, but I guess it's not open right now. Maybe like maybe it opens on the weekends. And a nice train mural here on the side of the building. Again, it all everything looks clean. There's just there's just no life. So this wine bar called The Cellar seems to be the life of the downtown. And you can see a few of the ladies of Texarkana and enjoying their afternoon in there along with the neighboring Verona Italian restaurant next door. So to be honest, the Arkansas side doesn't look too bad. Here's that abandoned hotel building from earlier. And 
And as you can see, the abandonment just picks up so much once you get on the Texas side over here. And that building over there says it's the Museum of Regional History. Now, maybe it was closed. I, I don't know for sure, but from the looks of it, it might be abandoned too. <laughs> But all is not lost. Dr. Pepper loves Tex Arcana. Twice as nice. Corinne May Griffith. But hey, at least parking all over the downtown area is free. I did take a cruise through some of the residential areas nearby, so let's take a look. And here we're on the Texas side. This is your typical small town, southern city look and feel. Lots of greenery, very lax, planning and zoning standards. Typically you're not going to find sidewalks in most of these residential areas. Many of these southern towns were built during a time with very light development standards and a more rural state of mind. I'm sure the rent is pretty cheap out in these parts. <laughs> Alright, now we're on the Arkansas side, just northeast of downtown. And honestly, it looks very similar to the Texas side when it comes to the residential areas. Interesting thing to note is that the Arkansas side is actually losing population, while the Texas side is slightly gaining. Alright, now let's talk about the big infrastructure. Let's talk about the highways of Texarkana. Alright, now let's zoom out and take a look at the highway network, which we can see here that Texarkana has the major interstate highway I-30, passing through it with connections to Little Rock to the east and Dallas to the west. I-49 comes in from the south and heads down through Shreveport and eventually is supposed to reach New Orleans. But for now, New Orleans is accessible via I-10. I-49 currently ends north of the city and is supposed to run north through Arkansas to connect with the rest of the highway in the northwestern part of the state. When or if this connection is ever completed, it will give Texarkana a direct link to the prosperous northwest Arkansas region, which is a big if. I checked out some of the US-71 corridor that is supposed to follow, and I'll just say that Arkansas has a lot of work to do to try and get it upgraded to interstate standards. I-369 forms the western side of the beltway around the city, and in the future is supposed to connect to the future NAFTA superhighway that is to be I-69. Will I-69 ever be finished? My video on that road will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. But overall, Texarkana is in a great position in terms of major transportation infrastructure. It has a full beltway around the city, I-30 as its east-west highway, and if I-49 and I-369 are ever completed, it will be a major interstate crossroads of commerce. 
To be honest, when I crossed over into Arkansas from Texas, I was expecting a huge drop off in the quality and condition of the highways. But I have to admit that Arkansas surprised me, at least in Texarkana. You can even see some of the decorations on the bridges over I-30 have taken some inspiration from neighboring Texas. All the highways around Texarkana were in excellent condition and are modern, safe facilities. You don't even have to worry about traffic in Texarkana. The roads are free flowing all day long, even at 5 p.m. The place is perfectly primed for growth if they can attract some major industries to the city. All right, guys, so what's the final verdict on Texarkana? Well, as we saw in the video, all the core infrastructure is in place. The ingredients are there, and the government appears to be spending money to keep it all well maintained. However, for whatever reason, businesses have abandoned the downtown area for the most part. So the skeleton is here, but there's little to no meat left on the bones. It's likely going to take a major business or several businesses choosing to relocate into the area in order to bring people back downtown. Being a future crossroads of these major interstates could be the shot in the arm that the place needs, but that could be decades and decades away. So in a short run, I don't see Texarkana's future changing too much. Also, if you guys thought Texarkana was bad, you're going to be blown away by this Arkansas city that we're going to be taking a look at next week. Let me know what you guys think. See you on the next one. Coming soon to a town near you. Also, guys, through the summer and the fall of this year, I'll be traveling around the cities and states you see in this area, including Chicago, hopefully Toronto, Montreal, Pittsburgh. But if there are some cities and towns you guys might want me to do a more detailed exploration or dive into in these areas, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can hit them. I won't guarantee it, but we'll see. And again, thanks for watching.